And by picking that model and picking that face, I can uh, put a face out there that I can use to include edges from. So we use the include edge command on this face. And you'll notice I can just pick those edges and it adds those sketches to my design. Then by going to my select tool and just picking that model, or, or excuse me, that region, I can pull that region out. And if I want to come out, say, uh, one millimeter, it'll create that for us. Now another thing I do want to point out, and I am honestly just haven't got used to using it yet, but it's a very powerful tool, is if I hold my right mouse button key down, I also can get to a radial dimension where you can get to several different commands right at your fingertips without having to go up to the ribbon bar. And this particular uh, uh, menu can also be customized to add the features uh, that you want to add to it. The next thing that we want to do is go ahead and add a hole. And in this case, we do support different types of holes in Solid Edge, whether they're threaded, counterbore, tapered, countersink. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it threaded. And what I want to do basically is just pick up the center of this and place the hole. Once that's done, I can turn off my surface and you can kind of get a better idea <coughs> of the design that I have here. You see that hole goes through next. The only other thing is we need to replicate this to the opposite side. Now obviously I could go on this side and do the same thing, but it would be a lot easier just to mirror this information. So I'm going to fence select about halfway through this cutout here. It's going to get almost all of the geometry, but because I didn't totally encompass this top face, it didn't uh, get it. So what I'm going to do is use our selection manager tool and just come up to connected and use the connected option. So any faces that are connected to this section, it highlights them. Then I can go right over to the mirror command, expand our coordinate or our uh, reference planes, and I can pick the uh, front reference plane to mirror about. And you'll notice how it automatically mirrors all of that information to the opposite side. Again, building parts in synchronous technology is very simple and very easy to use. The neat thing about it, too, is the live rules. The live rules are always monitoring your design. So if you, for example, this part's symmetric, if I pick one edge, and I start to pull it out. Notice it's pulling out on both sides. So I can change my model very, very quickly. And of course I can turn off live rules if I don't want it to monitor, monitor my design or make a change without the use of live rules. Okay, so our part is looking really good. The only other thing that I see that we might, uh, that we need to add here is this part is bolted to the motor but it's not really connected to the bottom frame like the front frame is. Now we're going to add some bosses here later, but those bosses have to connect to some type of tab sticking out. So that's the final part of this demonstration is to come over to our uh, feature library. And you'll see here we've got this umount.par. And I'm going to drag that umount out into my design. And you notice that it attaches it to my cursor. That's the first cool thing. But if I bring it and highlight this top face and I click on it, it's going to uh, place it, you know, in the file. But what I want to do is basically I want to move this part out. So I'm going to move it out in this direction. And I'm going to have it offset about, oh, about a millimeter. You can see the gap that I have there. Then what I want to do is I want to move it into correct position. So I'm just going to click the, uh, just click and, and let go of the uh, origin. And I'm going to put it on the corner of that particular tab. That allows me to drive that to this endpoint. And then I can also go up with it to the top point. So now it's in the right location. It's at the, at the very top edge, and it's the edge at the edge of that round. Once I get it into that position, I can then take the and click on the origin again and put that in center of the boss. 
hold the control key down and identify this outside uh, white uh, cylinder and I can then let go of the control and I can rotate this so it allows me to copy and I can key in 180 degrees and now I've got my tabs created. Now the only thing is they're not attached to my model. You can see that they're just face sets in the design and if I turn off the background components you'll see this a little better. There's those face sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right mouse button click and attach them. Even though they're detached from the model a millimeter off I can still just use the attach option on the bottom of the menu and it attaches that geometry to my design. So that's a very quick uh, way or method of modeling in synchronous technology apart uh, from a top-down design approach in an assembly. But what if we want to maybe run an analysis on this part real quick? Well, Solid Edge ST3 also offers Solid Edge simulation. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go to the simulation tab and I'm going to apply a material. In this case, let's just pick aluminum 1060. So it's going to go ahead and apply an aluminum, which means it'll change the color to more of an aluminum color. And then I'm going to create a new study. And in this case, we're just going to take, a, take the defaults. We'll do a linear static study. And at that point, I'm ready to start defining my loads and constraints. Now, we offer several different types of loads and constraints, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Right now, let's just fix the back face where it's bolted to the motor. That's not going to move, so we'll just apply a fixed constraint there. I'm also going to apply a force. Now, I'm going to apply a force to this face here, even though, and I'm going to have it going toward the front, even though it's probably not going to actually move in that direction, but when we put that bearing in there, the motor is going to move up and down or, or front and backwards. There's going to be some pressure applied there, and this is just going to give us a a way of running an analysis on this to see how strong in, in, uh, in the, the model is in this area. This is the area I'm a little bit concerned about because this is kind of thin here and I kind of like to see how the model will respond to that. So all we have to do is go to the mesh command and in this case I'm just going to bump it up to 4 and run the mesh and solve. So it's going to first mesh the model and then it's going to run it through the NASTRAN uh, solver. Now you can see that it brings up mesh properties and it starts meshing, going through the meshing operation, then it'll go through the solve, and then the, uh, the, the final results will be uh, created. What I wanted to mention at this point while this is running, we're going to run this live, is that we support several different types of loads, whether you're applying a force or a pressure. Uh, we have torque, gravity, centri centrifugal, um, temperature, displacement, and bearing loads. We also can apply fixed constraints, uh, pin constraints sliding along a surface. If, if a surface is actually you want it to lock it to a plane but it can move. Uh, cylindrical and we even offer user defined in ST3. Um, as far as meshing we can apply a mesh to an edge, a surface, or a body. So if you want to refine your mesh in this case we just mesh the entire model with one mesh but if I need to get in a smaller area and refine the mesh these are the tools that we have available for you to do so. Now you can see that the simulation has already done the solving and now it's creating, it's processing the actual results uh, for this particular analysis. And in general, we're just looking to see if this model will withstand uh, anything that the motor gives it uh, in its motion when this hand mixer is being used. It's almost completed here, a few more seconds and it will be done and then we can actually look at the results. And that's kind of neat as well. When simulation is done, it automatically puts you in the results mode. And here we are in the results environment where it gives you several other tools uh, to change what you're actually looking at in your results. For example, the color bar. Maybe I want my text to be black and maybe I want my font to be uh, Arial. And it just gives you better, uh, you know, black uh, with this particular background just looks a little bit better. So there's, there's really a, an unlimited amount of things that you can change uh, to get the different results that you want to look at. For example, we're looking at smooth contour right now. If I go over to um, banded, you notice the, the difference in banded contour. And then, of course, we've got element contour. So whatever you're looking for as far as contours, we, we support that. We can also animate this. 
If I click on the animate button, it's going to put this into an animation mode and show you. Uh, now this is an extreme. It's set to 10%. Actually, this model won't mo move near this much at all. Um, but it does give you an idea of how it actually would move. Now we're looking at stress, and obviously we're well within our stress. You can see where that is. If we look at displacement, you can see that this model will have no problem at all uh, with the uh, stress that it's going to uh, be under with this motor. So it gives you a quick idea, a quick way of coming in and running uh, an analysis on your model uh, using SE uh, Solid Edge Simulation. I'm going to go back out of the model and at that point uh, we're done with this particular design so I can go back to the top level of our design. We were able to go in and model this back frame using synchronous technologies and its powerful tools using a top-down design approach and then we were able to take Solid Edge Simulation and apply a quick analysis to this just to make sure that this model will hold up uh, to the use it's going to get with the hand mixer. So with that I'm going to complete this demonstration and the next demonstration we'll move into more of the, some of the assembly tools, uh, building assemblies and the things that we offer in Solid Edge SC3 assembly.